Hi, Alan Stratton from Eswood Turns. For Valentine's Day, I made this little heart for my wife. And after I made it, I thought, well, maybe I kind of pushed through that a little bit too fast. So I asked y'all for suggestions on fine-tuning my gear. Well, essentially, in wood turning, if at first you don't succeed, it's not try, try again. It's if at first you don't succeed, jig up. So let's jig up for this. So I tried to use a collet, but I didn't use it very well. And so this time I actually refined it based on suggestions. And I have a few spares. So this is a, uh, my, my spares, one, two, three more of them. Uh, but this is glued up four ways with a paper glue joint so that it can be easily split off into four pieces rather than to be sawn. I didn't care for the sawing experience on the bandsaw. And then once it's in pieces, we can turn it to a basic shape and then drill it out. And in this case, actually, I made it just a trifle too small, but since it's in four quadrants, I was able to sand the surface of it just a smidgen that made it fit perfectly. This goes in a standard wood turning chuck and I'm off and away with a good collet that is good for holding a spindle in the, in the lathe uh, without marring it. But the other problem that I had in that is that I did a, well, I used clamps, so it wasn't that dangerous, but a fairly dangerous cut on the bandsaw. So I decided to jig up for that too. And I made this sled for my bandsaw. Essentially, it has a runner on the bottom so that it can run on the in the bandsaw slot and then a pivot here so that I can adjust the angle and then this here is intended to be a hold down. I can put an additional bolt here or here depending on how I want to wedge it in. In actual practice I had to adjust it a little bit. But with all of that we should be able to very easily make then a new heart. This one is hollowed so it's just a little bit lighter even though it's not that big, just a little bit lighter, and it's a nice little heart for my Valentine's again. The sled is 3 quarter inch MDF. I found a piece wide enough and much longer than I needed, but I did not cut it to size. The reason will be apparent when I use the router bits. First, I need to drill a shallow recess for the elevator bolt head. This is 1 and 1 8 inch diameter and about 3 16 inch deep. Then drill the pivot hole at 1 quarter inch diameter completely through the MDF. To route the arc, I've removed the base plate of my router because mine is too big. I've cut a small piece of hardboard. Using double stick tape, the hardboard is fastened to the bottom of my router. My arc is about 4 and a half inch radius, plus or minus. One of the elevator bolts will serve as the pivot. After adjusting the cut depth to 3 16 inch, I'm ready to cut the 1 and 1 quarter in, 1 and 1 8 inch recess. If I did not have a 1 and an 8 router bit, I would have used different pivot points in the hardboard to get the width that I needed. Then swap for a quarter inch bit and adjust for the first cut for depth. I plan to cut in three lifts. Just remember to put a scrap panel underneath so I don't route an arc in my router table. Be warned. The next router task is easier. I need slots in the center of the two top pieces. I've adjusted the fence to cut in the center and marked the router bit position on the fence. The slot ends are marked on masking tape on the pieces. Again, three passes at increasing depth do the job. Then assemble with a piece of wood to ride the band saw slot. More preparation work, this time for the collet. I decided to make enough stock for several collets. Not only do I save work, it is safer to work with a larger piece of wood. I took a piece of paper, ripped it in half, cleaned up the surface, then glued it together again with a piece of regular paper in the joint. After the glue dried, I ripped the two ply wood in half, ripped, smoothed the surface, and glued it together again with the paper in the joint. After all that, I can mount it to my lathe between centers and turn it round about to the size of the outer diameter of the closed jaws. 
This should be enough front bearing surface. Then mark off the collets and the back of the face portion. I'm turning the collet down to a size somewhat larger than the inner diameter of the closed jaws. It has to be large enough to grip. It's a good thing that I made enough for several collets. Finally, I can start the heart. I am making the initial spindle longer than last time since I will be cutting it in half before hollowing it and then cutting the angle. I will not get the economy of a common cut. I'm roughing with my large bowl gouge. I can always use more skew practice. I'm aiming for about three quarter inch diameter, plus or minus. This time, no major catches. After sanding, I sawed it in half at the bandsaw. I will continue now using the collet chuck, but the first thing is to drill the collet to the size of the spindle. It could be a little smaller, but preferably not by much. But first, I have to separate the sections of the collets. This is the reason for the paper joints in my glued up block. A little tap with a mallet on a chisel and the sections come right apart. Then I can put on a rubber band and it's almost ready for use. It did not quite hold, just a little too big. But I can gently sand off a bit from each jaw to tighten the grip. Perfect. Now by inserting the spindle into the collet chuck, I can round over both ends of my spindle. Then reverse the spindles and drill out the middle. This will make the heart a bit lighter. Now to test my bandsaw sled. The place for the cut is a challenge since the spindle is so short. So the sled did not work exactly as I had planned. However, it was close enough that with a little scrap veneer, it did the job. I still don't know what angle I used, but at least the angle is consistent due to the angle arm of the sled. Then a quick sand to clean up the gluing surface and glue them together, after which I can sand the joint to clean off excess glue and any mismatch in the wood. A final buffing with Tripoli, White Diamond, and Carnauba Wax puts a nice shine on the heart. In wood turning, the phrase if at first you don't succeed, try, try again, needs a bit revision. Its corollary should be, if at first you don't succeed, make a jig. Thanks for all your comments on the first heart video. There were a lot of good ideas. I tried to take the best that also worked with my objective to be a good option for a wood turner. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe on my website, tell your friends and send me your comments and questions. Every week, I make a new wood turning video. Please wear your full face shield anytime the lathe is running. Until next week's video, this is Alan Stratton from As Wood Turns.